name is Stephen Austin. I am a proud student at Colorado Biblical University. And this video is an overview of a lecture that was done by Dr. Christopher Cohn. And the name of this particular module that this video is being presented for is called Survey of the Bible. And the name of the course is Pedagogy in Ancient Literature. And my instructor's name is Dr. Stephen Sperlin. Okay, here's my overview. Dr. Cohn, which was excellent by the way, he starts with an examination of biblical record, the Hebrew Bible, and the Greek New Testament. He goes into that, and his purpose is to draw out certain themes for those of us who are learning this information and concepts that can be utilized for teaching. He starts with three perspectives. I'm going to switch the order around. He went uh, from exegesis to analysis to synthesis, but I'd like to go from synthesis to analysis to exegesis. Synthesis is the bird's eye view, looking at the whole forest, looking at the mountains, looking at the, the river, looking at the stones on the ground, looking at everything from an aircraft, if you will, the bird's eye view. Analysis is the types of trees that are located in this forest. Exegesis, that would be the leaves, the details even of the leaves on the trees in this forest. So if I can relate that to the Bible, synthesis, let's say, might be the different books of the Bible. Analysis might be uh, the different topics and themes of the Bible. And exegesis might be the line by line, statement by statement, word by word, verse by verse information contained in the Bible. He goes on to say that the 66 books of the Bible are authoritative documents confirmed by Jesus himself. And one of the scriptural references that he gives us is in John 16 and 12 through 15. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Dr. Cohen's lecture takes us through a chronology of the Bible. He starts with the Hebrew Bible, uh, which he does not call the Old Testament. And I completely agree with him 100% that the Old Testament really starts in Exodus, the 19th chapter, which is the giving of the law. So the 11 chronological books, because the books of the Bible are not in order, but the 11 chronological books, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Joshua, Judges, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, Ezra, and Nehemiah. Those are the 11 chronological books. And what's interesting is I'm learning about the complementary books that are associated with these chronological books, which are not books, as Dr. Cohn puts it, that advance the narrative, but they basically complement or provide more information about that particular time period by giving us uh, something in more detail of what was going on during that time. And in addition to that, there are also wisdom books and there are prophetic books. And what's amazing to me, going back to the chronological books, just studying the 11 chronological books, and we get the history, all of the Old Testament history out of those 11 books. So the first book in this chronology, of course, is Genesis, which covers roughly 2,100 years. And that 2,100 years is about one third of the history contained in the Bible, which is pretty amazing. Genesis covers the covenant with Noah, 
in Genesis 9, and the covenant with Abraham in Genesis 12. The complementary book to Genesis, as I mentioned earlier, is Job. And Job kind of gives us a, an opportunity to really see how sovereign God is. Then as we move into Exodus, we see that God makes a covenant with Israel, but the covenant is, is really with Moses for the people of Israel, starting Exodus 19. And Leviticus is the complementary book. Now the covenant with Noah in Genesis 9 is a unconditional covenant the covenant with Abraham in Genesis 12 is an unconditional covenant. But the covenant in Exodus, which is interesting, is a covenant that is conditional. And Leviticus is the complementary book that kind of gives a lot of details that um, are specific to the laws that were given uh, to Israel after leaving Egypt. I would consider that to be their government. These are the people they're going into the promised land, but they need a government. They need regulations. After working through uh, the whole narrative of the 11 chronological books, we've covered 2,600 years, about 2,600 years of history, of recorded history in the Bible. So Nehemiah would be the last of the 11 chronological books. Then you come to the wisdom books. So in regards to these wisdom books of the Hebrew Bible, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon, it seems like the purpose is really wisdom. The purpose is how we relate to God and how we relate to each other and being able to do it in the best way possible using the wisdom of God. What's interesting is that God assigned prophets to the nation of Israel to speak his words during certain time periods. The kingdom was split, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom after Solomon and his disobedience. So now when we fast forward all the way to the last book of what we consider the Old Testament, Malachi. Malachi 3 and 1 talks about, behold, I'm going to send my messenger and he will clear the way before me. And this messenger is referring to John the Baptist. But what's also interesting to me is Malachi 4 and 5, which talks about, behold, God speaking through Malachi, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. Dr. Cohn did not say this, and I want to make that clear. This is just from what I believe, based on what I see in the scriptures, is I believe because the nation of Israel, the Jewish nation, rejected Jesus Christ as the Messiah, that Elijah is going to be one of the two witnesses that will have to come now because, as I read further into Malachi, because the Jews did not accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah, so now Elijah will come again, or, or a type of Elijah will come, well, John the Baptist was considered to be, I guess, the a type of Elijah and now I'm going to send the real Elijah again who was one of the prophets um, in the Old Testament I'm going to send Elijah again but it's going to be during the tribulation that's just what I believe well after the book of Malachi we have 400 years of silence then we move into Matthew which is one of the earliest books that was written in the New Testament and Matthew introduces us to Jesus as King, John the Baptist, who basically tells the Jews that they need to change their mind about how to get into the kingdom. It's not through their lineage, their earthly or natural lineage. It's through believing on Jesus Christ. So as we move through Matthew, which is one of the synoptic gospels right out through revelation um, you have an excellent picture of history biblical history that takes us from the beginning of creation all the way through to how things are going to end revelation which is considered to be a prophetic book things that are going to happen in the future so after giving a nice synthesis 
or bird's eye view of the Bible. Then Dr. Cohen goes into uh, some teaching tools. After all, the class is called Pedagogy in Ancient Literature. So he talks about some teaching tools, um, methods, techniques uh, that those of us who want to be teachers can utilize and draw out of the Bible as we study it, which is something that he really um, wants us to do. And he emphasizes, as he says, there's a lot more uh, information, a lot more examples, a lot more models and types that I'm presenting to you and visual aids that I'm presenting to you here in this lecture. But I just want to help you and train you to be able to know uh, or, or to recognize them, be able to pull them out and use them to make your teaching sessions more effective. Literary genres, he starts with that. And the Bible actually supports these four literary genres, which um, people have come up with other genres, but the four that he is sharing um, in this lecture are the four that the Bible supports, which is the narrative, wisdom literature, prophecy, and epistolary genres. And within those genres, you will have examples and models and types. And he gives examples and scriptures to support that. Visual aids, songs, repetition, which is found in Ezekiel. Um, and he also mentioned there are rep there's repetition found in Psalms. Uh, mnemonics, which is memory verses that are given in Psalms 119. Dr. Cole mentioned that uh, they're in order of the Hebrew alphabet. So I find that to be interesting. I never heard that before. Uh, parables, oration, dialogue, kiza, dialogue between Job and God and between Job and his friends and one of his youngest friends who actually uh, stated the truth about God and his sovereignty. What a great example of a story, 2 Samuel 12, where Nathan the prophet is talking to David. It's a story that um, is relative to something that David had done. But this is a narrative story of what happened. And then we have Nathan telling a story within this narrative story, which is very interesting. And then we have Romans 9 to 11, which is considered to be an argument. Dr. Cohen says Romans 9 to 11. Actually, it's Romans 1 to 11, uh, where Paul really lays out an argument about the truth of Jesus Christ, who he was and what he did for all of man. As Dr. Cohen brings his lecture to a close, he goes back to Ezra because he wants all of us to understand that want to become teachers. And he emphasizes that Ezra set his heart to study the law. You have to study the law of the Lord and to practice it. That's very important. And then to teach it and to go in that order, study it, practice it and teach it. Dr. Cohen emphasizes that. And he uses Ezra seven chapter and the 10th verse to make that point to us. And then at the end of Dr. Cohen's lecture, he has a panel discussion. And I noticed that he, he did that with my first course. And I really appreciate it because it gives me more insight. It's very helpful. He was joined by Dr. Dan Geffrick, which was uh, my advisor for my first course, and Dr. Stephen Lewis, who I had the pleasure of meeting when I joined the B World uh, certification program to become a B World certified facilitator. This discussion was a great discussion. It talked about several things, but one thing in particular was how important it is to use visual aids. If you're going to be teaching the Bible, the Bible is full of visual aids. And uh, the three of them went on to talk about uh, the significance of using visual, visual aids when teaching the Bible. This has been a great, great lecture. The reading material is great too. Um, the course is great. Thank you very much. Thank you.